Hey everybody, Josh here with Quality Storage Buildings. And in this video today, we're gonna to go over quick five things you need to know when you're purchasing a run and ship. Now, there's a lot of industry going on for run-in sheds right now. Uh, they're becoming a bigger thing in the market. Um, not super common, but they're becoming a bigger thing. And so we thought it might be helpful to go over some quick tips uh, to help you so that you can make the best informed decision possible when you're getting your run-in shed for your horse, cow, sheep, or goat, uh, whatever your animal happens to be. So here's the first thing to consider. Number one, metal framed versus wooden framed run-in sheds. All run-in sheds on the market right now are going to have metal siding. Whether it's wood framed, whether it's metal framed, it's going to have metal siding and a metal roof. Metal framed uh, run-in sheds are going to be generally built on site. They're built uh, usually onto concrete slabs or some form of concrete. Um, usually when we talk about metal frame, they use a square uh, metal tube or pipe of some kind uh, to construct it. They're generally fairly cheaply made and that's attractive to many folks. Now, the other hand, you have a wooden framed run and shed. These are more commonly built on a lot and then delivered to you. So a pro to these buildings is that they're portable. Uh, you can move it to different parts of your field as you need to for the purpose of your animals, uh, for the purpose of your land. That's a huge benefit. They're extremely sturdy, arguably as sturdy as a, a metal run and shed would be. There's some pros and cons that go into the metal frame versus a wooden frame. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information about those two different styles. The second important element to consider when you're buying a run and shed is kickboards. The, the importance of this can't be emphasized and here's why. Um, kickboards on a run and shed is what protects your animal from cutting themselves if they were to kick the metal siding on the run and shed. Again, every run and shed on the market right now um, is going to have metal siding. Our company, for example, does two by six kickboards up to four feet high. This also can be a con to metal framed run-in sheds because oftentimes metal framed run-in sheds don't come with kickboards. Please check with the company about kickboards because you don't want to hurt your animal in that respect. So definitely keep kickboards in mind with whatever you're doing you wanna make sure there's kickboards on there. So anchors are another important component. Now we talked about metal frame run and sheds. They are automatically going to come by and large with a concrete base, um, some kind of concrete that's, that's securing them down. That is a, a pretty good anchoring system. That usually comes default. With a portable run and shed, however, it is important to take into mind, is this gonna have anchors? Um, the last thing in the world that you want is to be sitting in your house, drinking your coffee, and your run and shed blows past your window and you do not want that to happen. You need anchors on that run and shed. Many companies provide anchors into the cost, but definitely check with whatever company you're looking into. Do you provide anchors? Are they included in the cost? Um, what does that look like? Definitely check on anchors. The fourth component to take into account when you're buying a run and shed is do you need a tack room or not? Not many uh, metal framed run and sheds offer tack rooms. I'm sure there are those out there. It's not as common. Wooden framed run and sheds generally are the ones that are doing tack rooms. But if you need a tack room for your hay, for your tack, uh, feed, whatever it may be, uh, check with the company, see if they have a tack room available. And uh, it, it's, it's a great upgrade benefit that gives you a little extra space right next to the run in to take care of your animals. The fifth component to take into mind when you're buying a run and shed is size. Uh, one horse, they generally say, needs about tw a 12 by 12 uh, space. And so if you're getting a run and shed for one horse, for example, I would recommend approximately um, a 10 by 12 or 12 by 12 run and shed. Uh, if you have multiple horses, you obviously add on to that. So you're probably going to want something along the lines of a 10 by 24 or 12 by 24 to that effect. Uh, cows are going to be a little bit smaller. So a small to medium cow, you're probably going to want anywhere from an 8 by 12 to a 10 by 12. And then of course, up from there as well, 10 by 24s, 10 by 20s for multiple cows, and, and then on as it goes as you need. Those are definitely uh, some different size options. Now, a lot of folks are doing sheep, goats, and they wanna run and shed for that. You can do pretty small, um, and that depends on how many animals that you have. So just calculate accordingly, eight by 12s, eight by eights, eight by 10s, 
um, 10 by 12s, and then on as you go. So keep size in mind. That's definitely something you want to do to take care of your animals well. We hope this has been helpful for you as you're trying to decide on the best run and shed for you and your animals. Uh, we want to make sure that you can make an educated decision, know what's on the market, and know the important things uh, to take into mind. So if you appreciate the content, like, subscribe. Uh, we'd love to help you further. If you'd like to learn more about the run and sheds that we offer here at Quality Storage Buildings, give us a call or text 254-687-9209, and we'd be more than happy to get you a free quote.